Hey everyone, it's Alan at Cobblers Plus and we're back at it again with a, another resole video. Today's video, we're working on a pair of RM Williams boots from Australia. So we're gonna get these guys all resold and uh, yeah, check out what the insides are like. We've done a video before on RM Williams, but I think it's time for another one. Let's check it out. So thank you for joining us and uh, like I said today we're going to be working on a pair of these RM Williams. These are in pretty rough shape. We've got the sole separating there and the toes are all ripped up and everything all around. So, you know, definitely definitely time for a resole. There's some, you know, beaten up parts on the leather here, some minor scuffing and everything. But we're going to go ahead and get these uh, taken care of. We're going to start out with uh, working on the soles. Uh, they have... Uh, the the original soles on these but what we're putting on is the vibram 700 sole here this is the brown one so it's got the cork inside you can see these little small speckles in here so it's got a little bit of cork in there it gives it a little bit more uh comfort feature in other words uh still has the oil resistant rubber compound which is great in it and uh matches the original sole fairly close in other words as far as appearance wise because this one is brown on here now, for those of you who might be wondering if we can get our hands on original RM Williams soles or anything like that, because I know some of you out there are major RM Williams fans and everything like that. No, unfortunately, we we can't get our hands on those. Uh, maybe eventually, but we'd, we have to work with RM Williams on that and see what they say, um, because obviously we don't uh, just have access to their soles just like that. Probably have to set up an account, and even then, it's one of those things where... Are they going to allow us to have them or do they not want us to have them? That's completely up to the company. It's not our decision to make. So we're going to go ahead and resole them with a aftermarket sole. Now, as you can tell from the, from the way the sole ripped here, it's it's ripping it's the type of rubber that this is that they used on here it's a nice comfortable rubber sole however that rubber that they used on here isn't exactly the best in other words as it, as you can tell it has a tendency to rip at the toe at a certain point i mean regardless it's kind of time to get these boots resold anyways but if you're walking down the street and all of a sudden that toe rips it's not a fun day that you're having unfortunately so the sole that we are putting on these is a little bit of an upgrade, in other words, to the to the boots on these. Now, the one problem I always hate with RM Williams, mainly it's this sole in particular, because this rubber is super soft and super stretchy. Pulling off these leather stacked heel bases is a pain in the butt. Now, for you, as if you own a pair, this is actually good that there's a leather stacked heel base for me as the cobbler it's a bit of a struggle so i'm gonna go ahead and mess around with this heel base and get this thing off of here and uh we'll be back in a little bit as soon as i got that off for you all right everyone so struggle is real got the heel base off though took a little bit but uh so for first things first i'll point out so you can see there's one nail sticking out right there it just kind of tore right through because that rubber is just so soft on here um there was very little resistance for some of these nails to to cooperate in other words but i should probably clip these ones off so there's a bunch of nails here and if i smack my hand on it it's not going to be fun you can see them right there but let's see how many nails we got one two three four five six seven eight nine the ninth one is stuck in the base still so they got a good amount of nails in here definitely holding these up by the way if uh if you're wanting to check it out i'll leave a link in the description down below but i'm going to do a cash or trash episode on these definitely and kind of give them a rating and review so if you want to skip to that it's a shorter video than this full recraft video but if you want to know the details on 
everything and see for yourself firsthand what I what it is I'm talking about. Definitely finish out the video and uh, we'll get through it. Now, there is uh, this little bit of issue here. Let's see if I can get this out. Oh, come on. No, it doesn't want to come out. Ah, there we go. I don't want to clip it and just leave it in the keel base. I want to make sure I pull out that nail. But... <clears throat> So at first glance, these heel bases, it looked leather for me because that's leather up top here. But turns out, so you got one, two layers that are leather. And then this third one is actually a fiberboard. You can see it kind of cracked right there. So I'm going to have to make sure to put a sealant in there and everything before I reuse the heel bases. Yes, we do try to reuse the heel bases, the original ones, as much as possible because these are still handmade to an extent. So this heel base will fit this boot perfectly here if i switch it over to another pair of rm williams that are the same size everything's the same on them they still might not fit just a little bit so you know it's best to try to save the original ones as much as possible the other thing is if we change out the heel bases it's additional material so the cost always goes up too um, but we could definitely do that as well so so we've got that off and everything um, now let's see what we got going on internally now from everything I've done with these Arm Williams in the past, they definitely have a nice construction. There are some pluses and minuses always to them that I come across. One of the minuses, as you can tell, that heel base is not fully leather stacked uh, material. It is uh, composite to a certain level. And uh, not the best thing ever, especially Especially because they use the, the first layer, the layer that's closest to the heel, because this is the way it is. You can have the rubber top lift right there, like that. And so the top one right here is the composite, which for comfort purposes, I, I don't think that's that great. But they did do that on purpose in such a manner because those gripper nails that we just had an issue with, they hold a lot better in this composite and they hold pretty good in leather, obviously, too. It's just that the distribution of the pressure of how the nails are and everything, um, they didn't really use much glue at all on here, if, if even any. So the heel bases aren't quite glued on. The nails are what are holding it on. Um, the composite material kind of helps uh, distribute that pressure of the nails a little bit better so that when they're holding it, they hold the heel base nicely. Where if it's on leather, it grips nicely, but leather still does rely a little bit more on the adhesive as well. So I guess there's a little bit of a plus to it. However, Again, if they used adhesive on here, actually, it would have been much better uh, from the get-go. But again, we're back at it again. That rubber sole. This rubber sole is not not that great. It does not like adhesive very much. That's why I'm not using any kind of solvents even to deactivate the adhesive here. And it's pretty easy to cut through the stitches. So, yep, we've got cork on the inside there already, as you can see. Looks like we've got a fiberglass shank in here, so take apart this back edge here real quick. And the back edge, or the rand on the back here, does look like it's possibly a fiberboard. I'm guessing it probably is, considering that they used some fiberboard on the heel base. Some companies do some interesting things sometimes. Just comes to show that not all brands, not all styles are even the same too. You can grab a different brand and uh, they use completely different materials and compounds and stuff. So just comes to show. And that's why I had to start that uh, cash or trash segment because there are some boots out there that might be good for a certain price point. But then there might be some boots that, you know, for that price, they're not even worth it. I've got a pair actually hanging up here that I'm also doing a video on. But uh, you guys can check those out also. They're the uh, Viberg boots. And there's a huge community for Viberg, so I um, probably angered quite a few people with that one. But we've got a nice thick cork in there and everything. And a fiberglass shank. I do like fiberglass shanks personally. Um, they're nice and durable. However, oh, dang it, they use that nasty glue on there. Yeah, it's all sticky and gross. I hate that glue. It's it's this weird 
cheap glue that they use. It's almost like taking a hot glue gun, but with really cheap rubber compound. And so after a period of time, it has a bit of a chemical reaction where it becomes very sticky inside the boot and a lot of companies do this it could be a $200 boot or it could be a thousand dollar boot and they're using the same adhesive to hold these shanks in but it's super sticky and nasty and I really don't like it it's just gross the problem with those is that uh, the wrong pliers there there is that they may start to squeak so look at that see that glue right there I don't know if it's showing very well on camera, but it's just stretching. Look at that. Oh, yeah, nasty stuff. Ew. It's like boogers. That stuff's gross. Ah, oh, dang it. The pliers are all sticking out. Oh no. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure to clean that up. I can't clean it up on the sanders because that stuff is gonna gum up the sander pretty bad. The other thing, because this is fiberglass, can't quite sand it unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to scrape everything off very carefully and then um, use a little bit of toluene, which is a thinning agent, to clean it off some. And then on the inside here, I'll be able to clean that off too. So this is what they look like. It looks like they used a um, kind of like a cardboard material, fiberboard for the footbed in here um which you, you see frequently at this kind of price point for boots and shoes uh so it's not uncommon uh, uh some of the higher end ones are going to use a leather on the inside there but uh the fiberboard it's not terrible but it's also not great either long term uh, as far as the little heel piece that's what happened the other one's gone completely some kind of dinky little I don't even know what the heck this is. It's like nylon fabric and some kind of weird cushion. At least it used to be cushion, possibly. And uh, it was all wrinkled up like that inside the boot there. And the other, again, like I said, the other one's missing completely. So that's what it looks like. Uh, yeah, and that heel ran right, ran right there, which is from here to here, that piece. This kind of uh, helps reinforce all the nails, first structurally, and second, it's a good guide for when you're resoling for at least the cobblers and whoever's recrafting it too whether it's factory recrafted or done by a cobbler this helps a lot as far as the guide but mainly mainly is um due to these nails gripping in here they need some more additional structural integrity and that's what that's for there um uh, there's a few additional details about it like um the distribution of the pressure of the nails plus uh it helps with the shock absorption too as well and on top of that, most everyone, they take off their boot, they stick their other foot on here, or they even use a boot jack, for example. This tends to be a little bit easier to beat up than it is the sole. I mean, if you only had this rubber sole here on the back without a rand, yeah, this thing's going to rip right off. I mean, it's too soft or rubber to withstand that kind of pressure. So definitely, definitely have to have that rand. But I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, get these nails all out of here. Um, if you're wondering how nails are removed out of these guys because they're nailed in from the inside obviously take a piece of crepe like this we stick that inside at the back of the heel sorry it's a little noisy because cassie's here with the kiddos in the back and the little one's fussing but anyways we got that uh piece of crepe underneath here and we'll just hammer down the nails that we kind of clipped while the sole is still on if it cooperates there we go And you have to have that piece of crepe in there because otherwise underneath is that steel last that we've got and uh it would just ram into that and nothing would happen or you're gonna bust the nail and it's just gonna be stuck in there and then we just grab some pliers reach down in there and pull those out there we go that's the safest and best way to do that otherwise i've seen some cobblers where they just yank them out kind of like the one that popped out it's not the best thing to do i really hate it when that happens when one nail gets stuck and it rips through but there's nothing i can do about it it just it happens sometimes with certain materials like this rubber sole that's not very strong and so it just allows that nail head to rip out and everything but i've seen cobblers do that intentionally sometimes and that drives me insane when i see that the other thing is that you don't want to leave them behind either some cobblers do that too many nails eventually over time of resoling all of a sudden you got just 
tons of little metal pieces like this all over the place here you can see and that's just too much once they're layered one after another so definitely a good thing long term to put that extra little bit of time in get the nails out properly and uh the cobbler that's going to be working on it's going to be a lot happier in the long run of things so let me get these all cleaned up take apart the other one and we'll continue on All right, everyone, so I got majority of the cork out and everything, and uh, I'd gone ahead and cleaned these guys up. So we're gonna go ahead and glue the shanks back in. So because these ones were kind of tucked in underneath the uh, uh, heel rand here, I'm gonna go ahead and get some glue in there. And come on, as much as we can, and then get one side of these shanks here glued up. But on this little tip here, I'm going to go ahead and put some on right away because we're going to stick that back in while it's still wet. Otherwise, while it's sticky, it's going to be just a pain to do. So now I can go ahead and glue everything up with uh, contact cement and get it ready for... Yeah, shank's going to shift around for a little bit until that glue settles. But then I'll get ready for the cork pieces to fill in now obviously you see a little bit of cork left behind and everything and sometimes you can't get all of it out um, just because obviously it's stuck in there pretty good and so I try to get as much as I can out of there scrape it out sand it out whatever I can method wise but I have to be also very careful that if I overdo it um, with the uh, with the sanding or whatever it might be see this uh, rand right here this kind of felt material the welt is actually stitched to that. It kind of structurally holds everything. And if I overdo it and sand through the rand quite, a, or not the rand, the uh, gemming, I don't know why I said that, the gemming, this is called the gemming right there, um, then that's gonna be not good long-term. And so we don't wanna do that. Uh, it's, it's a lot safer and better to leave the cork behind and uh, just build off of that layer it and then sand it off because we're gonna we have predetermined density cork already so that means once i glue this in i'm not pressing too much or too little in i'm gonna sand it out if i need another layer i'm gonna put a second layer in there and so the density and everything still stays the same nothing gets changed so that's uh what the cork is like and everything and thought i'd show you guys also if you're wondering uh this is uh these boots here, I don't know exactly which model they are because I was looking on their website and they don't have model numbers or names on the inside of these boots, which kind of annoys me. But I was trying to figure out which uh, style this was for you guys. And so I couldn't quite figure it out, but I know that it's from their comfort line um, because of the type of sole it is. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, they just call it cr comfort. So there's like Comfort Craftsman is a close model there. Uh, looks very similar in a Chelsea boot. There was another one also. What was it called? Uh, Macquarie and the Tambu. And they all looked uh, very similar style wise. The Chelsea with the elastic on the side and everything. And they had that rubber Comfort sole on it and everything. So. If you end up wanting a pair, I'll leave a link in the description for their website at least. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a referral type link quite yet until I start editing the video, but if it's a referral website, uh, I definitely appreciate it if you guys use that because it's no, no additional cost to you, but the companies usually give us a little bit of kickback. Some brands, they, uh, they do that, which is kind of nice. So if you end up using our link, it, uh, helps give us get get a little bit of a kickback which is always appreciated so definitely check that out i think uh, a lot of our other videos have the same thing but for now let's continue on with these boots and we'll see you back in a little bit
All right, everyone, so heel bases are on these already, and now it's time to go ahead and nail them because we pulled out the old nails inside there. So I've got a few already preloaded in here. This piece, you can see all these holes up here. This is actually to be able to load up nails like these or shorter ones too. These are the gripper nails, so they're gonna hold on very well. I put the um, longer ones in. We've got usually three lengths, but there are a few other different lengths that we can use. Uh, five eighths inch is the most common for like a regular dress heel that's not too high, but this is kind of a thick sole with a bit of a thicker heel uh, base on there. So we're gonna be using the longer ones. They will probably most likely poke through the top just a little bit, but we'll go ahead and let that happen because that's, that's actually a good thing. That means that they're going all the way in. And it's called a heel wheel because it's got a big old wheel on it. You can see me turning it. There we go. All right. Okay. Yeah, you might not be able to see down in there, but there are some new nails and everything. So this is all secured. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, switch over to the sander, rough this up, get the heels prepped. Kind of got interrupted there, but you can see one of the nails kind of poked through just right there. So that can happen, like I said, and uh, that's just gonna be smoothened out so we can get that top lift on there. So we'll see you back. In All right, everyone, so we're over at the other workbench, which I rarely really use. Right now, everyone's left for the day, but uh, Marcus has been working at this workbench for a little while, so he's got most of the shoe cleaning stuff on, on here, and uh, it's my job to clean them up. Usually, Marcus does all that, but he had to head out already because it's been snowing out here in Colorado today, and he had to get going, and uh, the customer is coming by tonight to pick them up, so i got to do the final touches on it, which is shine them up and uh, get these guys glued in. So let me get this one stuck in here real quick before, before it starts to dry too much. These are the leather heel pads that I just cut them out of a sheet of leather right now because the old pads, they were kind of junky. They weren't leather. They were like this synthetic thing. I'll show you guys at the, at, you know, towards the end of the video when we're about done. But yeah, we've, we've upgraded them to these little leather pads here that definitely will hold up better in the long run. Because those synthetic ones, the, the adhesive really gives out on it pretty quickly, honestly. I wasn't too excited about them using that personally, just just because, I mean, you guys have everything else really good on par on these boots. But then little heel pads, I'm going to get cheap out on those guys. They're just leather heel pads. I'm sure you guys got tons of scrap leather laying around your uh, manufacturing facilities, Arm Williams. Use some of those little chunks because when you're manufacturing boots and shoes, there's always little scrap leathers left behind. And sometimes, especially during manufacturing, there's still large enough pieces behind that you can definitely use them for things like these leather heel pads and stuff. But no. All right, everyone. So I've got these guys all taken care of with the waterproofers and everything. Got those Vibram 700 V-bar soles on and the GTO heels. 
So like I mentioned, if you go to our website and you're out of state and decide you want to order this uh, service here, typically we include this heel on here uh, with the GTO and we'll match up the color, whether it's the black or the brown one. Um, but if you are wanting to get that matching heel, because of the size of the heel, it's not something we could do on Western boots. It's too thick and we have to be able to slope it unless your Western boots are a certain height and everything. Um, I'm, it's it's definitely a little more complicating to get that heel on like only certain types of boots and shoes can handle that heel but for this one the customer had requested in particular try to restore as original as possible and that's what we've gone ahead and done uh, with that gto top lift heel otherwise that's an option too um, if you're wanting any of the products that we just used also like the sphere products or the Tarago nano uh, definitely i'll leave the link in the description for those two for you check those out but overall um these boots are great. I'm still going to do the cash or trash episode. So if you want to check that out, that usually goes on within a couple of days after the recraft videos. Um, that way you get like a scorecard sheet if you want to. But for the price point and uh, considering how these are constructed and everything like that, I, I think they're worth it. I mean, I, I definitely like these boots. I've, I've liked RM Williams and stuff. I'm not too excited about that comfort sole of theirs. It's, it's a comfort sole. I've got it here, but I'm going to grab the other one. But obviously that's what happens with your comfort soles there the rubber is not phenomenal and the glues don't like it too much i mean there's spots on here where the glue just came right off and it looks like it wasn't even sanded honestly so um and then as far as like the heel base is being attached they don't even sand that out see this is where the heel base is supposed to be most companies don't sand it out but at least they try to put some glue on there but there is, is zero glue residue um on here or the heel bases and stuff when i pried them off it all relies 100% on those nails holding it in place. Uh, so in our case, we definitely glue the heel bases on and nail them too, especially because the Vibram rubber does uh, does cooperate with gluing. At least most of them, there's a few of those new sole factor ones where we have to use a special type of adhesive or combination or primers. It's too much details for you guys to know, but for us cobblers, it's a very important thing. We have to know which adhesives and which primers we need to use or combinations, and then afterwards, how to secure it on there, whether we're using heat or just pressure or a combination and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot more to the cobbler industry, uh, in other words. But anyways, um, we got these taken care of very well. The only other thing is that I'm not too happy about is that little pad that they have. Where did I put that? I had that thing unless I tossed it. There it is. This little junky thing. I don't like it. It's it's junk. It's junk. So we upgraded those for them. So definitely definitely better and everything anyways hope you enjoyed this video um the cash or trash episode again will be up within a day or two after the recraft video so keep an eye out for that make sure you hit that notification bell icon and that you're subscribed if you want to see more videos like this definitely check them out we've got plenty of recraft videos cash or trash we're still growing there there's a lot of brands that we're hoping to go through as well and styles even too so but check out what uh what we've got on there so far and uh, if you enjoyed the video definitely give it a thumbs up share the video or share the cash or trash episode if you want to with anybody that you know of who's a huge rm williams fan and see in a short video basically form of what we like and don't like on them on these guys definitely like everything the uh heel base i understand why the company had to use the um uh, the fiberboard along with the leather it's because of those nails and they're really soft soles now if they upgraded their soles then they wouldn't need to use that fiberboard material so just want to point that out to you guys i know we're not big fans of fiberboard but sometimes it is needed just because of the density of it. it's a little bit tougher than leather is as far as how hard it is so anyways thank you for watching and we'll see you next time